when I was at Air Liquide, I, I more or less stumbled into a, a project to uh, look for sources of helium-3 on Earth. Uh, this uh, turned out to be an extremely interesting sideline for me, and I've, uh, over the years, learned quite a bit about that product. Helium-3 uh, has one key unique difference from helium-4, uh, two neutrons and two protons. Helium-3 is missing a neutron, uh, and it's a stable isotope. So uh, the helium-3 uh, has, has a very strange characteristics. The first one is that if it becomes uh, 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 in the area of a neutron source, the helium-3 will start to vibrate. Uh, that makes helium-3 very useful for uh, people who are, are looking for neutron sources. And a neutron source you might consider to be something like a dirty bomb. So Homeland Security Departments all over the world are use uh, helium-3-based neutron detectors to look for uh, 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 products that are coming into a, a country that shouldn't be there, like a dirty bomb. So ports, airports, cities, all these uh, uh, cities and airports and ports are have been uh, armed with neutron detectors that are mounted on poles. It's become a very ubiquitous product around the world, and all of them are powered uh, or made possible by using helium-3 as the, as the medium to uh, detect the neutrons. The other main application for uh, helium-3 is to uh, use it in a quantum computer. In order to get the element in the, in the bottom of a, of a quantum computer down to the 100 millikelvin uh, temperature that's needed to sustain the quantum computing, uh, you need helium-3. And the way that works is quite complicated, but the way I describe it is that you use a mixture of of helium-4, whose boiling point is 4 Kelvin, and helium-3, whose boiling point is just slightly below 4 Kelvin. And if you titrate the two at, the, at, at those low temperatures, you can actually drop the temperature of the element down to as low as 100 millikelvin. Without getting the element down to that temperature close to absolute zero, your quantum computer would not function properly. So uh, in the quantum computing business, it's really an enabling technology. Uh, each quantum computer, for instance, is filled with uh, between 15 and 50 liters of helium-3, uh, and it's quite an expensive product. Where does helium-3 come from? Well, all helium-3 on Earth comes from the transmutation of uh, tritium. Uh, tritium has a half-life of 12.3 years and transmutates into our friend helium-3. And why is it relevant to today's discussion? Well, there's a number of companies who have figured out that helium-3 is also present in the regolith on the surface of the moon. The solar wind has carried helium-3 mixed with helium from the sun to impact on the surface of the moon. And there are a number of companies that are trying to figure out how to go up to the moon and mine that surface in order to extract the helium-3. Because it's worth so much money, they feel that that enterprise uh, it would, would be quite valuable. And, and uh, this is... Uh, uh, the, the reason that a lot of these companies exist. And by the way, there are a number of companies that are in this business who have raised hundreds of millions of dollars to uh, try to go to the moon and start mining operations. So it's quite an interesting uh, aspect associated with space travel is this idea that they want to go to the moon to bring back helium-3. The helium-3 applications that I mentioned, the uh, dilution refrigerators for quantum computers and, and uh, neutron detectors is supplemented by the idea that fusion reactors uh, could use helium-3 as a fuel. And the promise of helium-3 as a fuel to a fusion reactor is that the reaction won't create any radioactive byproducts, which is an advantage for the, even the fusion business. So uh, there's a lot of emphasis and interest in, 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 in helium-3 for that, for that uh, purpose as well. Obviously, there aren't very many functional fusion reactors on Earth at the moment, but this is also something that has garnered a lot of attention from uh, venture capitalists, billions of dollars have been raised uh, by a number of companies, more than 15 companies to work on fusion reactors. And the holy grail of a fuel is actually our friend uh, helium-3. Uh, and so that helium-3 has to come from somewhere uh, because there's really not enough of it here on Earth to, to support all these uh, current applications, plus a new application of fusion.